Psalm 77 I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night I stretched out on tiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject for ever? Will he never show his favour again? Has his unfailing love vanished for ever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God, the waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water, the heavens resounded with thunder, your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind, your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Hello everyone. Shall we begin with a prayer? Father, thank you for this time of reflection together. Lord, would you bless the words of my mouth and Lord, would you open um, our hearts and ears that we may hear what you would like to say to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, last autumn, I went to Glasgow to play uh, my mum a visit and we did a little day trip together into the city centre and we ended up visiting an art gallery. Now, uh, to be honest, we weren't quite sure uh, what to make of what we saw and some of it was quite bizarre. Uh, it was full of um, modern art and uh, some of it was wonderful and quite accessible. But there were times when we just weren't quite sure uh, what we were staring at and uh, we weren't quite sure what the artist was trying to express. And as we uh, wandered through the exhibits, we occasionally would stop and would look at each other and ask, what is this about? What do you think it is? What do you see? And uh, what do I think this is saying to me? Now, of course, art invites us to ask questions such as these. And I think it can be quite helpful sometimes to view the Psalms of the Bible with the same questions and to ask, what do I see? What is this saying to me? Now, we may, as we read some of the Psalms, not understand the context in which the Psalm is written, and we may not know much of the culture in which the Psalm is written, but we can recognise the emotions in its words. Think of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not want, and just the emotion that comes up just from hearing those words. Now, one of the great things about the Psalms is that they're so full of honest emotions. And in all of them, the writers pour out their emotions in all of its rawness. They don't filter anything at all. These emotions run the spectrum of human experience. And so we have psalms of rejoicing and lament and grief. We have psalms that recount the story of God's people and the wondrous deeds of God. We have psalms that question how things are. And we have psalms which seek understanding amidst darkness or confusion. We have the whole spectrum of human emotion found in the psalms. The same emotions that we can feel and do feel many centuries later. The psalms tell our story and we can relate to them. And so today we're considering Psalm 77 and I want us to ask this question. What do we see here? What does God want to say to us through its words? Now the answers to these questions will be different for each of us and perhaps you have an idea already of how this psalm has spoken to you. Perhaps you recognise some of the emotions expressed in the psalm as being your own. We are certainly living in a time when we all have many questions and we may also wonder where God is just as the psalmist did. The psalmist expresses his emotions in raw language. He has cried to the Lord for help, but has found no comfort. And he is now even too troubled to speak. He feels rejected by God. Will God ever show his love again? This is emotion in its most raw and honest form. Yet, in this place of despair in which the writer finds himself, what does he do next? Well, he doesn't remain static in his emotion, but he goes on a journey. The psalmist moves slowly from I to you. He draws his gaze away from himself and looks to God. He begins to consider all of God's works and to meditate on all of his mighty deeds. And here's a question for us then. Do we remember to do this? It can be hard to do so, can't it? It can be very hard. Yet there is a great power in lifting our eyes from ourselves and how we feel and looking to God, the one who knows the words on our lips before we even speak, uh, think of speaking them and to share those emotions that we feel with God. The psalmist does this, but he doesn't stop there either. He has cast his gaze to God and he has begun to meditate on God's greatness. And now he takes a third step. He speaks out the character of God. Now he does this not because God needs reminding of who God is, but because we need reminding of who God is. We need to constantly re-remember because we are quick to forget God's faithfulness and slow to take comfort in the fact that if God has been faithful in the past, then he will continue to be faithful both in the present and in the future. And not only this, but the psalm reminds us that God is holy, that God is powerful, that God is committed to leading us, and that God knows the way. Now, how quickly we can forget to do what the psalmist does, to turn our despair into prayer. And how easy it is to continue to look inward instead of outward and towards the God who loves us and longs to meet us in whatever place we find ourselves. Now there is a final 
important point to this song, and it's how the psalm ends. The psalm doesn't end with everything being okay. The psalm doesn't end with the, the writer's woes remedied. But the psalm does end with hope. And this hope is one that, although things are not okay now, one day all will be well. The psalmist doesn't say this explicitly, but there is hope because he believes in and knows a holy, powerful and committed God, one who loves him immeasurably and loves us immeasurably too. A God who will be with us through whatever lies ahead over the coming days, weeks, months and years. There is hope. And this hope is so powerful that Romans chapter 5 tells us this. We can boast in the hope of the glory of God and that our hope in God will never put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the hope that is found in you and is expressed in the person of Jesus Christ. Father, we, wherever we find ourselves today and however you may be feeling, help us by your Holy Spirit to lift our gaze to you and to share with you how we feel in honesty and to know that there is hope. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.